Today we have a very different story for you at MTD CNC. I'm at MRT Castings in Andover. So often you'll hear, uh, if you watch our channels, us talking about Industry 4.0, maybe being at suppliers, showrooms, or their facilities, and looking at the software and talking about what it can do for the end user. Well, today we're actually at a company that has embraced connectivity and Industry 4.0. I'm at MRT Castings in Andover. They've recently integrated and implemented factory with software from CNC applications. Let's get inside and talk to Phil Rawson, the managing director, about why he's chosen this path. So MRT Castings, we're a aluminium die caster um, based in Andover in Hampshire um, and we've been established since 1947. It's a family business that was set up by my grandfather um, in 1947 and we moved down to Andover here in 1965 and we've been growing on this site ever since. Um, invested heavily over the last um, sort of 15, 20 years in CNC machining so that we're um, now providing a lot more value added services on the die castings that we produce in the foundry. So we try and see ourselves as a one step, one stop shop um, through from aluminium gravity and high pressure die casting through CNC machining and then surface finishing and even electromechanical assembly to provide finished products to our customers. And a one-stop shop MRT casting certainly is. In fact, I started my tour today in one of the three machine shops on site looking at the machine tools in operation. I asked Phil why he'd selected the brands of machines that he had. We try to standardise wherever we can um, so that we've got a lot of flexibility in our range. Um, and so we focused on Brother um, CNC machines for our, our milling machining centres. Um, and on the turning side, which is a bit smaller for us, uh, Hyundai Weir lathes. We employ 55 people here, um, operating on an extended single shift. Um, so we can run key machines for the equivalent of a couple of shifts, but we're doing that for over time. Having 55 employees and a range or a suite of high performance machine tools is one thing, but how do you ensure you're getting the best out of your investment? We see connectivity as really key um, infrastructure for moving forward to embrace the opportunities of Industry 4.0. So across the business we've been reviewing where we have data in isolated sort of, uh, pieces of equipment and how we can actually look to bridge the gap and integrate those. So for example our CNC machines um, looking to, to streamline the DNC connectivity for uploading and downloading machines from, a, from a machine tool programs from a central uh, data library integrating that then in turn with our ERP system where we're managing all our scheduling and our uh, customer uh, sales order data and, and stock control um, but also moving forward to things like integrating it with pre-tool setters with our CMMs for metrology um, and really just looking at where that data is passed from one department to another and how we can link those together uh, to streamline that operation. Two months ago Phil invested in factory with software from CNC applications this is responsible for the connectivity he tells us about. In addition to this, the software also enables him to monitor his machine shop. We went on to ask him further questions about this. So monitoring creates a lot of new opportunities for us to identify causes of downtime, um, but also to help us with real-time management of the business. So as we've grown, um, we've added more and more CNC machines. We've had to spread those out across the site. So we now have three separate buildings um, with CNC machines in. Um, so because you're not walking past those machines all the way through the day, you need to know what's going on in the, some of those more isolated parts of the site um, at any one time. So monitoring is going to be able to give us that real-time dashboard of what's going on at any one time. But also it means that we can monitor um, and analyze the data of where we're losing time, uh, which machines are more productive than others, start to look into the reasons behind those. So. Um, if we can actually both analyse the machine tool itself um, in, in its own performance data but also the data that the operators are putting into the tablets next to the machines that explain the reasons why a machine has stopped at any one time. So that might be because Swarf has blocked up in the machine or because the, the cutting tools weren't available or because they couldn't find their supervisor, something like that. So if we can then at the end of the week or the end of the month look back and see how much time we've lost for those reasons, then you know whether it's something that as a business we need to look at and maybe find a better solution because you can quantify how much time you've been losing for those reasons. When we were looking for a, a connectivity solution, um, at the time we identified three main areas that, that we needed to, to find solutions for. There was machine monitoring um, and, and 
reporting uh, of that data. There was DNC for uploading and downloading programs. And there was also creating that infrastructure, the cabling and the communication software that meant that different pieces of equipment could talk to each other. So we looked at several different providers. Uh, but the beauty with CNC applications and their factory with solution was that really they could offer us a package that, that covered all three of those bases. Um, so we've got one integrated solution and it's not just isolated to what we're currently doing in the machine shop. In the future we see the opportunities to roll that out into the foundry and into the assembly operations and those sort of areas. And so often with investment in software there's restrictions in how you can get the best out of it and where you can utilise its benefits within the company. That's not the case with Factory Wiz from CNC Applications. And in fact, it's very evident from talking to Phil today that this is just the start of the improvements. So we've already got a few exciting things planned over the next few years. We're just about to break ground next month on a new construction of a new foundry site for us um, just across the road. So we've bought a new site. Um, we're going to be doubling the, the size of our current foundry. And then in turn, our existing foundry is going to get redeveloped into a new machine shop. So We've got big growth plans. We know that technology is going to be moving on in that time as well. So not only are we going to be adding more machine tools uh, and more foundry equipment, but also that technology is going to be moving forward. And so we need to be prepared to, to embrace the opportunities of that. So therefore, we need infrastructure that we can build up from. So factory whiz and the connectivity that it's given us means that we've got that platform that as we start to introduce new pieces of kit, just like we've done in the last months with adding our pre-tool setter from Zola, um, it means that we can actually get all of those pieces of kit talking to each other. So we've got that, that baseline um, infrastructure ready for whatever developments come along. With MRT exporting 55% of their product, I couldn't leave this interview without talking to Phil about Brexit, which is just around the corner and finding out his thoughts on the future of UK manufacturing. I think it's going to be a really interesting few years to see how UK manufacturing adapts after Brexit. Um, it's not what I personally would have would have wanted for the business. We, uh, we've been growing very fast on exports, particularly into Europe. We won a Queen's Ward for export a couple of years ago. We currently export 55% of our product and most of that's going into Europe. So I think we're going to have to adapt um, and change and I think we will rise to that challenge, um, you know, but it's important therefore that we, we are as agile as we can be. Um, and so investments like this in, in Factory Wiz um, are part of that solution so that we can think on our feet. We need better access to information, we need to be able to adopt new technology quicker. Um, so this is part of our solution. So we'll rise to that challenge, but it's still not clear what that challenge is going to be. So there we have it, what a fascinating story. A company that has embraced industry 4.0 and connectivity throughout not only their machine shop but their entire business. It just goes to show that being here, a user of this sort of technology just shows that Industry 4 is definitely here. It's real and it's here to stay. Paul Jones, MTD CNC.